Welcome everybody out there here to our next webinar at uh, JFT Bank. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to have you all here and if I look to uh, the, at least the names uh, you choose uh, for registration, um, yeah, it really looks quite international if I can uh, read the names right. Um, so it's really fantastic to have such a broad um, um, awareness of um, those kind of webinars. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those webinars at, um, at JFD Power Webinars. And today is the 25th of July, 2019, uh, 7 o'clock, at least uh, Central Eastern Standard Time. I think that's the right wording. Uh, you know, I'm in Germany. Uh, I think that uh, is quite easy to recognize just from my pronunciation, but anyhow, so it's um, seven o'clock and still quite warm. 33 degrees, you might even see um, at the top of my, my screen. Um, yeah, maybe it's as hot as at your places, but uh, it was really a warm day today. Anyhow, we talk today about swap trading. Okay, that might be already the first question, what does it really mean, swap trading? Okay, trades, you know, swap trading is related to swap costs. And that is normally, as the name is already telling, costs. So we have to pay something and that even every night. Uh, you will learn about more details about that uh, in a minute. But there are opportunities that we earn money just having a trade overnight or to be more specific at a certain time of the day. Okay, that sounds fantastic to earn money just because I have an open trade, regarding less of the trade finally is going. That comes, comes on top as always, and that might be positive or negative as well. But there are opportunities where we have so-called positive swaps, positive financing costs, and that's all about within that webinar. Later you will see I have a, once again two Excel sheets and if you have interest in those uh, you just uh, drop me a line here uh, at the following email address you see it on the first page s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com and uh, you may have already downloaded the slides um, you will find those in your go to webinar control panel and you can download the slides unfortunately I cannot upload the Excel sheets there it's only possible to have PDF documents um, okay, that's the reason, and therefore just uh, send me an email to that address, and of course, uh, just call me Stefan. Uh, that's the easiest part. Um, okay, and many thanks for all the nice uh, greetings here in the GoToWebinar um, chat uh, channel, uh, the question and uh, greetings. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Before we really start, you know the procedure. I have to show it once in any webinar. That's um, by law even. Uh, to show the risk disclaimer, mentioning that we talk about trading, that we talk about investing, and we talk about trading strategies. And finally, if it comes to your own trading, of course, you do everything on your own, on your own responsibility. I think uh, that's uh, quite fair to understand. And uh, that has to be mentioned in any webinar. Um, and yeah, we, there's some obligation uh, for showing that information anytime in a webinar. Let me get you a little bit more interested into the topic of today. And um, of course, we have to talk about the background of swap costs and especially why those can be positive as well, which is really good for us. And having something which is positive inherently hey doesn't it sound like an edge you know that from many webinars or within web many webinars especially from my end we talk about probability advantages for specific trading strategies and we really dive deep into excel sheet statistics and so on in order to find those edges, to have power candles, special combinations of indicators, and so on and so forth, in order to find a valuable and 
remarkable edge for our trading activities. But in this case, we have one which is yeah, just there. Going into the right instruments, into the right directions, we can earn money. Okay, so that, on the other hand, is already an edge. And that's what we are always looking for when it comes to trading. And therefore, we have to talk about the backgrounds, of course. Then it comes to the selection. What pairs in which direction do really offer positive swap costs? So, and I will explain a little bit how you can translate the specifications you have within your MT4 terminal. If you go, for example, on the Forex pair with the right mouse click, then you will see, okay, there are, uh, they are mentioning the swap values, but in points, and maybe that's not the best unit uh, points. I would prefer euros uh, or US dollar, but uh, some currency at least. And so we have to translate those. How to do, I will explain. And how to find those, uh, I will explain as well. And then you will realize, okay, there are Forex pairs with positive swap values. And then I will show you within three strategies and this, the wording strategies may be a little bit too heavy because it's that easy. I will show you my personal account because I started thinking about that webinar uh, about two months ago and that was a point in time I opened 18 uh, trades and we will of course see how those trades uh, are doing. And I can tell you already the trades are doing well earning positive swaps and earning money with the trades itself as well. Uh, maybe that is um, just, I don't know why, but let's see. Um, but it's, it's really the easiest kind of strategy, just invest in everything with positive swap values. Or you may use <clears throat> the uh, the swap table for your discretionary trading. So you, if you open trades uh, for a couple of days or weeks in, or even months, then at least what I think is it's a must to have a look before entering those trades uh, into the swap table because if you go into the wrong instrument in the wrong direction and have a trade there for a couple of months, you might lose even if your trade um, is positive. So the best or worst example would be a trade on US dollar Swiss franc. So you can lose 12 euros per lot per day just because of swap costs. So going into such a trade discretionary uh, and having in mind uh, that that trade might last a couple of months, I think that's not a good, dis a good, good decision. And finally, we might just do a selection out of historical data, looking, okay, we know we have 18 possibilities, but maybe there are a few better than others, just looking to historical data. And finally, I want to show you a tool uh, which is capable to show you uh, the swap values and much more. And um, if you have uh, logged in already earlier, then you have seen already that tool. I just bring it here for a second. So we have price volume indicators. We can see forecasts. We can see swap costs, trend behavior with that tool. Um, I mentioned it already now. Uh, later, I will explain the tool. Um, and there's a guy behind, which is Peter Milner. And if you are interested in that, Yes, there's a price related to that um, kind of indicator, uh, but anyhow, it's a real cool tool. I will explain at the very end of uh, the webinar. But let's go back to the topic, the background of um, swap costs. Okay, in principle, swap costs are financing costs. It's to some extent like, okay, I lend money and I have to pay interest rates. That's quite obvious. I mean, um, in normal days, when we have um, interest rates, let's say at 2% or 3% and not at more or less 0%, at least in Europe, um, then I can explain 
swaps already was a, a very simple trade. If you go long in DAX or any other under uh, any other indice, um, what does it mean? Okay, you lend money and you have to pay uh, interest rates for that. Okay, that would mean just normal behavior. You would have negative swaps and you would have to pay every night a certain amount of money because yeah, you lend money and it's like that. You have to pay for that. But on the other hand, if we have, would have interest rates like 2 or 3%, you would earn money for a short trade on an index. That's the normal standard behavior. But for Forex, it's much more complicated. I will show you on the next slide. But before going for that, let me go. Uh, let me just explain some more details about swap costs. And if you trade, for example, out of MT4, or MT5, uh, or anyhow at JFD or any other broker, even um, what does happen with your trade? Always at 10 p.m. server time, at least that's now the definition of uh, JFD and other brokers might have slightly other times, but they more or less all are doing the same. Every night at 10 p.m. server time, you would be charged with those financing costs. You see them in an open trade explicitly and that number, if you have that trade constantly open, you would see that number would increase, increase, increase. Okay, that's exactly because you, you have to pay every night. And to be more precise, it's really the question whether you have that trade open at 10 p.m. So theoretically, you might open a trade at one second before 10. Then if you would have positive swaps, you could close that trade one second after 10 p.m. Then you would get already uh, that uh, swap uh, profit into your final account. But unfortunately, the normal standard trading costs are higher than uh, than swap costs, uh, swap profits. So that looks like a brilliant strategy because you have the trade only open for let's say two seconds. Uh, but um, finally, it, that will not work. But anyhow, at least that's the definition when it comes to uh, charging you the swap costs in any open trade. And there's another uh, special thing. On Wednesday, you have to pay always a triple amount. Okay, or you have profits uh, uh, three times. Hey, why that? Is something special was Wednesday? The answer is no. <laughs> um, the, that uh, three times is compensating the weekend because there is no weekend fee, no Saturday or Sunday fee. And that's the reason why uh, the weekend is charged already on Wednesday. For whatever reason, I have no idea, no clue, but at least that's what's being done. So on Wednesday, the idea of that one second or two second trade around 10 p.m. for some special cases might be already a chance, but that's not the webinar. Uh, so I will go for long lasting trades. As I mentioned, swap costs can be positive as well. Normally, a short trade in an index has positive swap costs only in those days with extremely low uh, interest rates, uh, even. Uh, short trades on indices have uh, still uh, real costs. But there are forex pairs which really show up positive swap costs. The best example, by the way, is uh, US dollar uh, Swiss franc, but I forgot the direction. I think it's a short trade or a long trade. Uh, let me think about it. No, it's a long trade. It's definitely a long trade. Uh, then that is uh, the best choice uh, for having uh, swap profits. And that will be about uh, five euro per night uh, per lot. But later we come to that special pair as well. The background having positive swap costs or uh, positive swap profits, um, the background is simply different interest rates in different regions. That's the normal standard answer you always get, but no more. Let me explain you uh, why it really happens. 
but but don't take every every wording here 100 percent but it's only telling you the idea why it's possible to have positive swaps and i just go through an example of, of a specific trait uh, in detail okay as the example is let's buy one lot long euro us dollar so it would be i mean here i open a trade euro us dollar one lot long that's all what happens what happens behind the scene so to say and let's uh, assume that the exchange rate is um, 1.12 if you open that long trade euro us dollar it means practically we buy 100,000 euros and we sell $112,000. That is what is really a trade, one lot, Euro, US dollar. Buying 100K euros and selling 112K, at least for that specific exchange rate, um, dollars. But now let me change my wording slightly. What it really means is um we we lent one hundred twelve thousand dollar in the United States and we invest one hundred thousand euros in Europe. So lending money in US, investing in euros. That's what we are really doing with a one lot long trade euro US dollar. But now I think it becomes obvious what really happens. Because unfortunately, we invest into euro. But as you know, the interest rate in Europe is close to zero. Uh, today was once again confirmation <clears throat> of that zero. And on the other hand, we we lend money in the United States and they have higher interest rates. And as you know, the interest rates for, for lending money is even higher. So we would have to pay interest rates for lending money and we would not get any, any interest rates for the invested money in Europe. Hey, that are real swap costs. That's a long trade. And that's how it works. Yeah, now the good thing comes. <laughs> Let's turn around everything. Let's open a short trade. One lot, euro, US dollar. Then everything turns around. So then it means we lend money in Europe, and since the interest rates are quite um, low, it will not cost us that much. But we invest our money in United States, in dollar. And since the interest rates are higher in the United States, we would get um, interest uh, exactly in that country. And now we have positive swap costs or some people call that a carry trade uh, but i want to just share with you the idea of what's really the story behind one conclusion we can easily um uh, one, one conclusion is quite obvious for example if in two countries in two regions the interest rate, interest rates are more or less at the same level and you know that lending money is always higher than uh, the, for investing money, then even a long and a short rate, both would have uh, real swap costs if those level out, if the interest rates in the two regions are more or less the same. So in order to have <clears throat> swap profits, we need high differences in interest rates in different regions and then going just in the right direction. That's all. That's the story behind positive swap costs. Okay. And that's really uh, the idea, earning money with lending money in a country with low interest rates and investing money in countries with high interest rates. That's the idea behind. But now let's look for numbers. For, for that trading idea. And um, I just go 
to the slide just uh, to show you that within uh, the PDF uh, document of um, today's uh, webinar. But finally, I simply uh, switch to uh, the real Excel um, sheet because then we can see what I do and how I calculate everything around here. Okay, um, hopefully that's now big enough. As I mentioned, I started the idea for that webinar at the 7th of June uh, 2019. And at that point in time, <clears throat> I create exactly that table. And I have updated the table uh, one month later, and I will update the table um, again in the beginning of August. The good thing before I can tell you uh, the swap rates here, they indeed change on a daily rate. To tell you the story about that, I have no clue uh, why those are changing even without any changes at interest rates of uh, central bank decisions. But they are always small, small moves, but they are really minor, as you will see within that table uh, looking uh, for one month's uh, time delay here. But let me explain you the table, because what you will find on the website, for example, of JFD, there you can find the swap points as well. You will find exactly those marked numbers here for long and for short, but that are points. But I'm interested in euros. Okay, and in order to calculate out of those points the real swap profit or cost, uh, yeah, we have to do a little bit uh, of a calculation. So we need to know uh, what kind of um, symbol we have. Um, there are all the Japanese yens are special ones, uh, therefore they have a specific multi. Uh, you, you know the story like BIPs, BIPs in um, Euro, US dollar are not the same like BIPs in <clears throat> Euro, um, Japanese yen. There's a factor of 100 uh, between those two. In order to do that kind of calculation, we need the exchange rate euro to the second part. So if we would want to recalculate or we want to calculate uh, the swap profits and costs um, for Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, we need the interest rate uh, euro, Canadian dollar and the given swap points. And then the calculation is quite easy. Let me mark everything here. Uh, we just need um, uh, that that multi and uh, we need the swap points and we have to um, divide the swap points by <clears throat> the exchange rate and that's all for a one lot trade and then you see okay a one lot trade Australian dollar Canadian dollar would bring you per night two euros costs for a long trade and 34 cent um, for a short trade Okay, that's already a hint that the interest rate difference between those two countries, Australia and Canada, uh, might be not that high. That's exactly the story behind uh, uh, that we have both negative numbers here. But you see already next line, Australian dollar, Swiss franc, okay, good for a long trade, more than two euros per night if you trade one lot. On the other hand, a short trade, Okay, would cost you six euro per night. And you can see already um, that I have done a quick calculation. Or oh, let me first explain uh, how I mark or how I uh, get a colored table here. So I use a threshold. Uh, later I explain why uh, I have a threshold of one euro. I want to highlight all those positive swap values which are bigger than one euro. And that's exactly those green uh, labeled uh, uh, numbers here. And you see, okay, there are 18 which have positive swap values. That's cool. So we might invest exactly in those 18 um, symbols, but of course in the right direction and you can see the highest number highest number as i mentioned already is us dollar uh swiss franc and reason okay united states have not really high interest rates and swiss franc is negative and exactly that's the reason why we have the best number exactly for us dollar swiss franc for a long trade and you find my uh, my example with euro, US dollar, okay, a short trade, 
should have been positive with um, swaps and it is indeed as I told you the story around. Let me sum up everything then in total. So um, if, and that's strongly not recommended, if you have 56 open trades, each pair with one lot long, one lot um, short, you would have to pay every night 110 euro. Okay, don't do it. Um, I know that's a real stupid idea. But if you would go for those 18 <clears throat> with positive swaps, so then on average we earn per symbol 2.55 euro. Uh, or if we have all the 18, then it's 40 five euros or 46 euros per night uh, including now saturday and sunday because you know as i mentioned uh wednesday we have the three day so it's really per day or if i multiply it with one year now 365 um not taking in, into account uh public holidays so there are only a few uh when um, markets are closed hey we would earn 16,700 uh, 16, euros per year just with swaps. Okay, later remember that uh, number, but please divide it by 10 because I will show you an account and I opened exactly those 18, was, but not with one lot. I opened all the trades with 0.1 lot <clears throat> and that would translate to a potential profit just because of swap profits of 1,600 euros per year. Okay, can I look at the size of swap for a currency pair on uh, MT4? Um, the answer is yes, and uh, I will show you in a minute. Uh, just a second, then you will find those points and how to translate those points. Yeah, you might use exactly that Excel sheet uh, or you do it simply by your own, no, no question. Um, but you will get exactly those numbers like minus 2.99 and um, yeah, here's a calculation. Um, and I will show you because I go into MT4 in a minute. What I would, li would like to mention is in total, if everything would stay the same uh, after one year, my 18 trades would have uh, earned one and a half thousand euros but you know still we have open trades so let's talk about the risk as well uh, in, not in one minute maybe in two minutes uh, you know what I mean the first what I would like to mention else here is that uh, what about the changes within one month um, and if you compare those numbers and just concentrate on the green values 2.24 2.21 oh, 3 cent 1.27 1.32 that's not a big change um, so there are minor changes but really minor from one month to the other all the changes are not that big so um, that's good to know. We don't have to update the table on a daily basis in order to see, oops, uh, something which earned five euros per night shows up uh, all of a sudden was minus five. No, that will not happen. Um, it's a slow process. Okay, so if you have the table, you know already one idea what we can do in order to really get something out of our positive swap values but once again what i really would like to mention hooray we have an edge and that comes for free so and let me bring you the numbers a little bit in 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 in, in a balance so to say um so one lot trade us dollar swiss francs earns five euros per day you know that at JFD, you have to pay 5 euro 50 uh, commission for one lot trade. So after one day, the commission is paid. Hey, that's good. And after two days, approximately, um, commission and spread is paid. What does it mean? After two days, we are not any more in the situation that we have a principal probability disadvantage of trading. You know that kind of sentence because I mentioned it uh, in several webinars. Trading is asymmetric. What does it mean? We open a trade 
any trade. In the next millisecond, you are in the minus because you lose commission and spread always. So that is what makes trading what I call asymmetric. It's a little bit like going to a roulette, roulette table. You know, there are, there's black and red. Unfortunately, there's a green zero as well. Both will lose money, red and black. So finally, we have an intrinsic probability disadvantage playing roulette. And the same is true for trading. We have an intrinsic probability disadvantage because of costs. Maybe any decision is 50-50, whether the price goes up or price goes down. But still we have that intrinsic probability disadvantage. But for such a trade, US dollar Swiss franc, we have after two days an intrinsic probability advantage. That's cool. That's really cool. And normally we, we spend hours, maybe weeks, in order to derive strategies, finding the right edge. This one, we can get for free, that kind of edge. But still we have the normal trading risk. As you know, it's a standard risk. And the daily move of any Forex pair is typically by far bigger than our swap profits. But we can do averaging by a couple of trades. And that's the idea. Let me show you um, the first strategy. Okay, we, we simply invest in everything which has pos uh, positive uh, swap profits. And I put a threshold here into the game, one euro. Uh, you will find out uh, in a second why. Um, only if the swap profits are bigger than one euro per night or per day, uh, then I invest into that instrument. Practically, that meant that I opened 18 trades at the 7th of June 2019 because there I started everything. The logic behind is now I will close open trades if swaps get negative. <clears throat> As you have seen, um, there's no big movements from day to day. It will take time if anything comes from positive to negative. And I will even open new trades <clears throat> if a new symbol is popping up with positive swaps bigger than one euro. And of course, I only invest in, uh, not invested already in that instrument. That kind of threshold, the idea behind is to avoid any daily open and close of a trade. Because in principle, it might be that we have one cent positive swaps and the next day we have one cent negative swaps. And always buying and selling that instrument, that's not a good idea because then we have always to pay commission and spread. Let me go for MT4 and uh, show you my account. Um, so that's on server two. And to that we come uh, later. Let me change my profile for swap hunting. And then you will see my 18 open trades. So I have 18 open charts. And just as you can see in some charts, I put the red line because that red line is the 7th of June. So that's the point in time I open the trade. But now I come to the question, where can I find the numbers? So normally you might have that market watch here and you have your instrument on the left-hand side. Um, with all the details. But if you now go with the right mouse click uh, on a given symbol and then go for specification, uh, then you will see uh, that pop-up window here. And that pop-up window is telling you the swaps, swap long minus 3.12 and swap short minus 0.0. 3, 9. And now you see the reason why I use an Excel sheet to translate those those points into euros because I have no clue uh, right away to, to see um, what euro value is uh, related. But of course, a positive is a positive number. So uh, whenever you find something positive there, it's definitely a, a profit for swaps. And you see three days swap is Wednesday, so it's in German, but anyhow, uh, there you can find those values. And on the web page uh, of JFD, you will find the same numbers as well. 
let me first have a look here for, for that account. And you see uh, my account has uh, still an, um, a balance of 10k euro. And uh, I have floating profits of more than 1,300 euros. Hey, that's great. But that is not the intention of that trading idea, that I have those profits just from the trade itself. What I I am heading for, and let me open the, the trade list here, and then we can see uh, the numbers for swap values. And then you see that with the uh, euro US dollar trade short, I have earned up to now uh, 25 euros. I would realize that profit when I close that trade. In this case, I have additionally 117 euros profits from the trade itself, just from the right movement. Okay, since I don't know finally in which direction any pair will go, uh, I only focus up to now on my profits on swaps. If you sum up that table here, it sums up to about 200 euros. Um, yeah, that's what I have earned already now. Um, if I would close everything, then I would have been more profit because my trade itself have been profitable, at least in majority. So uh, here you can see uh, a little bit better that uh, the majority of trades are green numbers, so they have additional profits just from the trade itself. Isn't that a cool idea to have that kind of portfolio? And that was, let's say, brute force. I have just invested without any additional logic investigation in those 18 with positive swaps bigger than one euro per night per one lot trade. That was all. And it looks good. Let me explain you some other ideas, what we can do with that kind of input of having positive swap values. Thinking about your trader, you are really doing long-lasting trades. And with long-lasting, I mean really several days, several weeks, or even months. If you have those trades within your trading portfolio, trading idea, trading strategies, then I can only highly recommend to use that swap table as an additional input. As I mentioned, a long trade, uh, a short trade in a US dollar Swiss form would cost you 12 euros per night for one lot. You must have a very good trade to compensate that. So I would not go in any trade. And even if the chart is telling me, hey, wonderful idea, I must go into that trade, I would not do just because those swap costs. But on the other hand, <clears throat> having the swap profits, if you just investigate a chart and looking around, hey, um, I have to look for a short trade in Euro, US dollar. A long trade is, so to say, forbidden. Because in Euro, US dollar, short trades are profitable for swaps. Why not just looking for that within the Euro, US dollar chart? Still, we have lots of symbols which have profitable values, uh, um, profitable swaps, and just investigating those charts against uh, the right direction within those symbols. There are still enough trades while losing money just for um, paying swaps. Positive swaps are just an in, in inherent edge, so we have a probability advantage on our side. As I mentioned, US dollar Swiss franc, after two days, we have an intrinsic probability advantage. That's really that's the reason why I mentioned it now, third time, I think. It's really a good thing to have those kind of edges. But we can do one step more or maybe a little bit more intelligent than I have been with my brutal investment in the, to those 18 uh, instruments. We might just investigate um, the historical behavior of those uh, potential candidates. And let's look around short term. Short term here means maybe a 
couple of months, one, two, three, five, maybe even 12 months back and look what is the overall trend. And we can do that by a regression line in a chart. I will show you how to do that. Or we can use Excel sheets for that kind of investiga investigation. And I will share that with you as well. But let's start with a really quite very easy stuff. And let me explain you first with an example of a trade for Australian dollar, Swiss franc. As you can see, I have an open trade, a long trade, 0 .01, 0 0.1 lot, and the um, red line is marking uh, the point in time for opening the trade. Let me <clears throat> zoom in a little bit, and now we have a history within that chart um, of about one year. And even with your your uh, blank eye, um, yeah, no, naked eye, I think that's the way how you tell it in English. Uh, with your naked eye, you can see overall <clears throat> um, it's going south. So in principle, to going for a long trade in Australian dollar Swiss franc doesn't look that good. And of course you are right. I have invested nevertheless and therefore Within my table, you can see, okay, I have lost already 23 euros uh, with that trade because still we are um, yeah, below my entry level and that's not good for a long trade. And now let me um, show you uh, one possibility to, to get that behavior going south even a little bit more um, pronounced or more mathematically. Within um, MT4, you have the possibility of uh, insert channel uh, linear regression. And by doing so, um, it's just uh, something like that. And let me go until I open that trade. Now I have a history of about one year. And <clears throat> that blue line here is simply telling you uh, what's <clears throat> what's called the regression line. So it's the best linear representation of those prices within starting from here, going to here when I open the trade. And obviously that line goes south. So we have a negative slope. So it would be not the best idea to have a long trade in that symbol. So we can do a little bit of uh, chart analysis and can do that even mathematically. But let me show you another example where we have been on the better side. Let me go for <clears throat> Euro US dollar and let me uh, zoom in that we have once again about one year history. So now this is about one year price history uh, for Euro US dollar. And even without any regression line, uh, everybody can see uh, that it goes south. Good. Uh, so we know that. Uh, so going for a short trade, which is the positive swap direction, hmm, why not? Brilliant idea. And as you can see in this case, uh, yeah, the, the trade itself is profitable as well quite opposite to, to the one in Australian dollar Swiss franc. So it's nice to have that trade, that short trade, and earning money every night additionally is even better. So we can do it just within the chart, but we can do that kind of analysis. And I only want to touch that briefly uh, because um, it's just an Excel sheet and you can do similar steps um, by your own, I know that. Uh, but if you have interest in those Excel sheets, uh, of course, you can have them. And I have just um, um, looked for two opportunities or two ways of thinking in order to, to find a clue for a given symbol. In this case, I concentrate on British pound, US dollar. And for that pair, we have swap it, uh, positive swaps if you go short. And as you can see already within the chart, uh, that's now really long-term chart starting at 2004, uh, going short uh, for that pair is um, on a long end, 
definitely a good idea. So uh, even having positive swaps into that direction is already visible a good idea. But we can do it mathematically as well. So what I did is, uh, let me uh, switch to the very end of the table, uh, even if I don't need to go at the very end, but anyhow, uh, I decided to do that. What I did, I just calculate a virtual trade for what, just one day. And what you can always starting at the close and ending at the next close and just going for what would be the result of such a trade. And if you look for those numbers, you can see, okay, they are in the order of uh, a few 10 um, and uh, they are a little bit further up. Uh, there will be trades even uh, 100 euro or 200 euros. So you, so you see 10 euros, 20 euros, something like that. The swap uh, profit per night is only in, a, yeah, in the range of a few euros. And therefore, I mentioned the potential risk by the trade itself is always higher. So therefore, <clears throat> going into the overall right direction is a good idea. From one day to the other, we might earn 50 euros <clears throat> or we might lose uh, 70 euros. But on average, but on average, and I switch back to um, the picture, but on average, the numbers going short are positive. As you can see, if you look for the last 300 days, all the daily changes, um, yeah, you see we have for one lot trade uh, 34 euros. Hmm. So that's a good, a good hint to have short as a preferred direction. So let's take that as a confirmation. Another idea, and now I have really to go back to the very end of the table. Now it is <coughs> a little bit different. I started trade just for one night. So that's a minus 71 euro here. Or I open the trade here and end the trade at the very end. Or I open the trade here, ending here, and those two point five one euros as the average profit per day. And now the numbers became smaller because the averaging uh, effect is much more pronounced. So if I go back here, um, those trades will be already 100 uh, uh, days. But the daily profit just from the trade itself is now three euros. And that's <coughs> what you can find within the chart. For our, that's the green line here um, as a moving average of the daily profits uh, as an average of such a trade uh, based on uh, the end of uh, the price line here and on average it's positive. So it's a confirmation going short in British pound US dollar is a good idea. <coughs> so that's another idea to pick to select the best for that I. Um, trading uh, strategy. I mentioned <clears throat> that there's a tool around and that tool, um, and I have to start a little bit different, but I can start here already uh, going for that tool, uh, changing the profile to Peter, and then I can take the time here to show you um, one address uh, I would share with you. And um, as I mentioned, that tool is not for free. It costs money uh, and you will find everything on Peter's uh, homepage. But I want to share at least with you what's possible uh, with that kind of um, with that kind of tool because it's a really interesting uh, tool. As you can see, we have three screens. One is the symbols, <clears throat> one chart screen, and one additional uh, chart screen here as well. But let me explain everything which has been coded by Peter Milner um, <clears throat> directly within an MT4. So you can see it live in action. We have those three um, windows. On the left hand side, <clears throat> we have, so to say, the market watch. All the different symbols and all symbols which are in the real market watch are now listed here again. Okay. Good to know that. And now we find a lot of information already within that left-hand side window. 
Let me start with what we are talking about that webinar. Swap long, swap short. Okay, here we have it. Australian dollar, Swiss franc, 2.1 point, points translated into 1.9 euros <clears throat> for a long trade. A short trade, minus 5 euro 30. So we have that information already visible and uh, in colors. So that's very good to know and to see. <clears throat> you can immediately see uh, which direction is positive for any uh, Forex pair. And if you would put additional instruments like indices or other currency pairs uh, into your market watch, they will show up here as well, which is good. But we have much more information here as well. You see within the chart, which is always in my case a daily chart, and another chart, in this case uh, the right hand chart uh, is a five minute chart. Within that chart we have four different EMAs uh, in order to, to have an idea what is the overall trend. Okay, in this case it's definitely south. So we have that information as well. In red, we have the so-called price volume uh, profile. And uh, that means that at specific levels, there is much more trading activities than on other levels. Let me change the symbol uh, and maybe I can have a better idea for that. Now we see <coughs> those mountains. So at that level, we have most of the trading activities, uh, followed by this level or second most um, um, trading activities. That's something you can see directly with that uh, mountain-like profile. Okay, and we have that in the five minutes chart as well. And finally, we have another chart down here, <clears throat> which is based on seasonals. Seasonals in a sense that uh, Peter looked back for the last five years <clears throat> and calculating the typical behavior within those uh, months. And you see in blue the average behavior over the last five years and therefore we have a forecast for the next uh, 60 days. Okay, interesting to know. So that would be <clears throat> if it goes as in the past then it would follow exactly that kind of red line. Good to know that. <coughs> we have that in the table here as well. So Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar would be for the next 20 days um, going north, the next 60 days going north. Hmm. Good to know. Let me go into that chart. I have just to click here and now we have instant and instantly as a daily chart um, US dollar, um, New Zealand dollar here, and the five minute chart here. But the forecast <clears throat> is north. And what about the swaps of uh, that direction? Okay, swaps are green um, for short rates, so it's a wrong direction. So here it would be better to have um, an idea for a short rate. The seasonals would not confirm that. The chart itself, Hmm. doesn't look that bad. So I can even go for um, most trendy behavior. You see here, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, um, everything is red. Oh, but what does it mean? That means on a five minute chart, we are below all the four EMAs. On a <coughs> H1 chart, we are below all those um, EMAs. On a daily chart, we are just on the edge. The number within here is telling you how many candles have been below uh, for the complete uh, um, four different EMAs. So you have something like the, the trend strengths. If all is red, it goes south. Unfortunately, we will not earn money with a short trade. Um, so, because we, that is red here as well. You see, it's really quite cool tool to investigate the markets and we can even, um, by scrolling, uh, just clicking here the button, we go through any uh, symbol 
and get immediately the charts and uh, yeah it's really handy uh, to to have uh, such a tool and if you are interested just visit uh, peter's homepage and get in touch with peter if you uh, uh, may want to have that kind of indicator <clears throat> it's helpful in sense of swaps trends and overall chart uh, analysis <coughs> oh, my my, vo my voice is really going down today here unfortunately but we are more or less at the end of the webinar um, I hope you got an idea what it means to have positive swaps as a free edge and really think about it <clears throat> use it as an additional element for your trading um, if you go for discretionary trades uh, go for the right symbols with positive swaps because then you get an intrinsic edge for your trade and that's always a positive aspect or you may even go for such a systematic profiles or swap portfolios like i have been done just investing in all the 18 which have um, more swap profits than one euro per night per one lot or you may um, go through that kind of selection process with slopes in the chart only going into those instruments which um, are confirmed by that slope anyhow finally it's not the holy grail no definitely no because we still have that normal trade risk I mean if I open a short trade on euro US dollar which is very good in terms of earning swaps but if the price goes north then that trade will be ruined as well the good thing is that it looks like going into the direction of positive swaps is in favor earning money with that trade as well but I cannot <clears throat> let's say I really prove that because I don't have historical swap values so I cannot do a back test for that but at least it looks like normally you get statements from me more mathematically driven and not like it looks like <clears throat> but in this case I can only uh, use the phrase it looks like that going into that direction in majority is in favor with the trade itself as well and that's really brilliant anyhow if you have interest in slides maybe you have downloaded those uh, but even if you forget just drop me a, an email and if you have interest in the excel sheets um, uh, of course i can send those to you <clears throat> and then if you have interest in that indicator uh, please get in touch with Peter uh, you find that link within the slides uh, or if you forgot it just send me an email um, I, I make sure that you get the right co contact that's for now that's for today <clears throat> it's still quite warm 32 degrees outside okay um, let's go for that and I can tell you I like it uh, if we have temperatures above 30 that's my um, the best uh, situation anyhow I hope you enjoyed the webinar next month we will of course have uh, additional webinars and the main topic will be correlation let's think about that next month okay enjoy your time have a nice evening bye bye